Hello and welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host Malak here with my co-host Mariam Khuela Rafan Inara. Hey, Sam hey. Hello. Hello. So ladies, everyone has officially entered their winter break. It's Woo-hoo. the end of December, beginning of January. It's the holiday season. So a lot of times on our social media, we're seeing people, you know, celebrate the holidays basically with gifts or parties, etc. And now that we're all kind of between work and school, there's a lot of talk going around about holiday parties and attending holiday parties or not, or to the extent that we should take part in the festivities. So what are your personal takes on the holiday season? I love the holiday season. I love when it's, you know, getting closer to Christmas time and, you know, you're just in downtown and everything's like glowing and like the lights, everything's just so pretty. And I feel like people are so much nicer. (laughs) That is also very true. I mean, everyone's happy. They're either off of school or they get some sort of break from work. There's sales going on, the lights. So it, it is a festive time, definitely. And I think because everybody's taking part, it feels like everybody's so much happier. You know, like between the businesses and people attending and family are getting together, like you can't help but enjoy this time of year. But do you guys think that we are taking it now a little too far? Because I feel like nowadays I see a lot of Muslims look like they're legit just celebrating Christmas. I think it's different to appreciate the decorations when you go shopping and the lights. Like, all of that is pretty. I think taking that upon yourself and now you yourself are decorating your house and putting up a Christmas tree as a Muslim yeah, what do you mean by is a different... I mean, like, they're putting up Christmas trees. Muslims? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not saying that they're not... They don't believe in the background of it, but I think at this point it's now... They feel like it's become more cultural in a way where they're, like, just doing it because everyone else is doing it. I think Muslims taking it on as their own is wrong. I don't think it's become normal because it's cultural. I just think majority of the people in the country are Christian, so there's a lot of people who are who are celebrating it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's become culturally normal. So, like, if you're not a Christian, that you should also take it on and celebrate it. No, but the thing is, we don't really acknowledge the religious aspect of Christmas when we are talking about it. Like, maybe within the families, they'll talk about maybe going to church or, like, the reason why we do this is because of the Jesus and all that. But, like, in day-to-day, we don't really talk about that at all. But that could also stem from the fact that I think the far, at least personally speaking, the vast majority of maybe Christians that we surround ourselves with aren't necessarily really religious Christians, but they also just celebrate the holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, so I could see a lot of Muslims being like, okay, well, they're just celebrating it just for the gifts and the idea. Not to say that you should be doing it. I don't agree with it either. But, you know, not just to say that they're just doing it because their non-religious Christian friends are also just doing it. Yeah, like, there's not necessarily a strong mm-hmm. religious tie to it for the people around us that mm-hmm. we feel that. I think it's easy for people to get lost in the culture because it's so ingrained in our society but during that's, the holidays. But it, it's different to appreciate it outside yeah. of your home. Like, when you're out and you see the lights or you see the parade downtown or something, like, that's one thing. Versus bringing it home, like, that's your... When you're at home, that's your private abode. What you do in it is strictly what your beliefs are, what your values, your ethics. You know, like, you only bring things into your home that you believe in. So I think it's a really naive kind of excuse to just say, oh, I'm just trying to be a part of the culture or, oh, I'm just trying to be like everybody else. Because you can do that outside of your home. You can appreciate everything outside of your home. You don't have to bring it home with you, though. But how about if it's, like, more for the aesthetic rather than, like, just trying to be like everyone else? Because you don't, point, it is you don't kind construct- of conforming and it is kind of, uh, not kind of, but it is conforming. And like yeah. assimilating but like what do you think if people are just saying okay no i'm just doing it because it's very pretty i mean i think christmas trees are very pretty i love looking at them. a lot of other i mean that doesn't really mean pretty too. yeah i know yeah I mean, but, but like what do you but like you guys said aesthetics are things you find beautiful when you go to like a really nice restaurant because they make really pretty dessert like that's aesthetically pleasing yeah. but when you're trying to pinpoint the one thing that specifically connects to christmas or connect mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like that's that. yeah that's a little pushing it too far you know what was really interesting is i've seen people do something for aid where it was the you bring tree? A Christmas the tree? tree like it was but in the shape was, of a crescent yeah it was in the shape of a crescent i was trying to figure out the shape but what do you guys think of that because i think i never at first when i saw it i did not even think of the christmas tree and then my friend's like dude it's it's clearly mimicking the christmas tree and i'm like oh my god you're right so but it was like very interesting to see how now we're even it doesn't even matter about christmas we're putting it into like Eid too which is kind of weird so here's my thing with that i think when you're trying to raise kids in america in general it's very difficult right and trying to separate what 
what you yeah. can't have what you can't have whatever mm-hmm. that's really difficult so if that's your way of telling your kids like there's nothing wrong with it when it's in celebratory of our religion i don't think there's really anything wrong with it if you're if your substitution of putting a tree up for eid is your idea of telling your kids like this is when we can celebrate it and this is why we don't do it for christmas then i think I personally think there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think you have to do it, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it if you mm. do do it. I just think that we're trying to mimic others when we don't have to. Like, why do we always have to do what others are doing for our religions now? Like, but why then why, like, w- can't you use that same argument to say, why do you put up lights during Eid? Like, no, aren't they that's Christmas lights? A, that's, that's, not a, that's not a Christian thing. Lights but I'm saying, but, but here, you only put lights during festivities. So why do we put only lights during Eid time because like aren't we taking festivities from other faiths too it's not a symbol of a yeah. certain yeah. Yeah. as opposed to a christmas tree is a symbol yeah. of christmas okay i could say that i guess yeah so i would just prefer not to do that and just having our make our own tradition of how we celebrate our holidays rather than just like equating the two or trying to be like one mm-hmm. trying to be like the other is adding a e tree religious appropriation <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know if that's an actual thing but if it was, it w- I would think it would. Like, sh- would Christians be offended that some Muslims are taking in the E tree and putting it in their house, like Christmas? I don't know if they'd be offended, but it's like that whole, yeah, like borders the line, like that's my culture, that's my religion, why are mm-hmm. you doing that? It's funny to think about, like I would have <laughs> never, like religious appropriation, I would have never thought about it like that. Okay, so how about when you have, when the schools have holiday parties and you want like, should your kids be taking part in holiday parties? Like, giving gift, receiving gift, you know? I like that's should elementary. Public schools, yeah. are they even legally allowed oh, to yeah, have Christmas not. parties well, because they don't it's supposed to be a, a separation? So that's the thing. They don't call it anymore Christmas parties. They mm-hmm. change it to, like, a holiday party okay, or a winter fest. Is there? Exactly, Mariam. So should our kids be in attendance? That should like be, such a should they be taking to part? To find a loophole <laughs> in, by changing a word. Congratulations, yeah. public schools. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Well, who, Dimitak, did you go to a public school when you were in elementary for like a year or middle school? Yeah, I think I, I was they like have two years. No, two. And you did too, right? So, yeah. So did they do anything? Honestly, I remember we would gather in the gym and we would like sing some Christmas songs. Yeah, always. Yeah, Like the, always the kids that, that played bands, like yeah. we'd have like, and we'd sing and I sang. <laughs> <laughs> and I would sing Jabby too. <laughs> yeah, my but they, it is like you feel it in the school atmosphere also. So yeah. should we be teaching our kids not to take part? Or should we allow them to feel part of the community? It's hard. No. Honestly, that's a lot of parents way. struggle with it. A lot of parents I know really have a hard time with this because their kid comes home and now that they're talking about Santa and all these gifts. And, and you're practicing carols at home. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah, re- trying to memorize the song. So there's so many, like, parents are like, what do I do with this? And how do I teach my child? Well, this is not something we celebrate. I just don't feel like that's a huge thing to be worrying about. You know but what I'm then, saying? Like, but these like, could no be parents the are. kids get confused. Yeah, and these could be the kids that grow up thinking, Honestly, what's the big deal? you don't get confused. Like, well, I grew no, up in public school. Well, my parents were always no. like, should we take them out? Should we keep them in? But as a kid, you wanna, you want them gifts and candy. Like, it's I'm fun. Like, I, That's what you're thinking about. But we tell our kids, like, yeah, we don't believe in Santa. I was, you know that, yeah. I was that kid that got in trouble because I was like, Santa's not real. And literally uh, one teacher. You're the worst. Me, I know. One teacher. Because that's what you were taught at home. Like, your parents are like, Santa's not real. This is like, yeah. you know, this is like false, whatever. So your parents yeah. tell you this. And you go in elementary school and you tell this to other kids. Like, literally one teacher took me to the side and she's like, you cannot say that. She's like, how about if you believed in this? And I told you that wasn't real. So she's like, you have to respect other people's faith. And of course, I was ignorant that I was a little kid. And I was just going around saying what, well, you know, my parents have taught me because that's not something we believe. But in, in general, like, my parents were always like, do we put them, like, should we take them out of Halloween parties? Do we keep them? Like, you know, it, it's it's been a struggle. And I feel like every t- time it was a little different. Like, sometimes I attended, sometimes I didn't attend. Yeah, yeah what I was going to say when I was in public school, because I went to public school for, like, kindergarten through third or something like that. And one time we did have a Halloween party. And there's obviously more than just me being Muslim in the class. And some Muslim kids would come in a costume and I didn't come in a costume. Oh, and yeah, I remember my teacher funny. coming up to me and she's like, you know, like, why does she wear a costume and why don't you? Like, what's the difference? Mm-hmm. Why can she celebrate yeah. and you can't? Mm-hmm. And I just remember being like, I don't know, my mom said I can't. But then <laughs> like, it just shows you how, like, it shows you how, like, different, like, our parenting is and how yeah. uh, different our thoughts are. Like, everyone doesn't think the same way. Yeah. When it comes to these issues, they're very, like, great. I think whatever parents do for their kids like this is a prime time to teach them how to interact with other people of other religions Mm -hmm. so that when they go into the workplace it becomes natural yeah so like 
like, have it. if your child takes part just reminding them that like, this is listen, not part of your faith this is what they believe yeah. we or don't believe maybe this you should teach your child to be strong and say we don't take part so you go and explain to your teacher that this is not mm -hmm. something a part of your religion that you would like to just sit and watch them sing the christmas carols as a as yeah a you don't have you don't to. want to sing the christmas but carols yourself. so like it is on. extra but i'm saying like you could also go that path as well but it's, i feel like it's so hard for like a third grader to be like i'm sorry i don't want to take know. part no, in not necessarily i actually heard somebody who uh shared that their son he's pretty young i think was like kindergarten too or first grade and he said oh like i don't celebrate that and the teacher asked him like what do you celebrate and he talked about eid and ramadan and the teacher incorporated eid and ramadan in their yeah. thing and what they taught she's like oh like our you know this child celebrates this so like then they incorporated that into and she and the guy was like i was surprised his the father he's like whoa like, I, I didn't know my son in kindergarten had that courage and was like strong with his beliefs like he knew what he celebrated and the teacher was nice enough to be like oh, okay let's incorporate what you believe too like we need to have a discussion with but teachers, then, too. But when that know, happens, do you want all the Christian inclusive. kids to be like, sorry, I don't celebrate. I, I'm not going to take part in this. Like, come on. What That's how I... Mean? To be honest, for this whole conversation, like, this is how I think of it. Like, if I were to have an Eid holiday party and, like, some people, just because you don't you don't necessarily believe in it doesn't mean you Why can't would just you respect my holidays. Why would you invite people who don't celebrate Eid to an Eid party? What? Like no, I'm saying like for why like can't you if just respect that other people don't celebrate what you celebrate, and it's respectful okay, to so respect that they don't celebrate. I know, that. I get it, and that's fine. But so then, why would you go out of your way to invite those people, knowing that they don't celebrate it? Okay, but I'm saying okay, right now she in didn't that throw school a party, she just educated the class about other holidays mm. and gave him his thing that but he does. But if she were to throw uh, a party, like, and all the Christians kids are like, sorry, I don't, and you which is probably going to be the parties. majority. <laughs> It's no, a public like, school. I just no. True. It's not even about public schools. I disagree with your statement. Just because people don't celebrate it doesn't mean you shouldn't invite them. Like, yeah, maybe I don't have Christians friends or non-Muslim yeah. friends that don't celebrate Eid. But if I want to have them celebrate it with me, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's odd. Seriously, in my opinion. It's not because like they you're inviting them to celebrate something that they don't celebrate it's not necessarily like that's it's not necessarily the whole foundation them of that you're not inviting them to celebrate you're just you're, invi you're inviting them to enjoy yeah, a celebratory enjoy time it. with you you're not for necessarily for a specific purpose I think what the it purpose is we are celebrating Eid I'm inviting you to come celebrate Eid if I just wanted to have any random party whenever why can I have a different party mm -hmm. that I want you to all come together and we could enjoy each other's company. I think like, that's for a purpose. Yeah, I think when you include religion as a specific holiday, it does become interesting and, like... Because it's specific to religion. And that's why it could be, like, a little bit of... But it could be a way of also teaching people about your faith in a good time, having a good time. It really could be. It could be. I just... I don't think it has to be that segregated. Like with culture sure we're yeah, with exactly. interculture stuff but when it comes to religious no that's it it's only a muslim thing only a christian thing only a jewish thing or buddhist literally or is only a muslim thing like you but are that only doesn't celebrating mean Eid because you are muslim but if that you doesn't aren't mean muslim then you aren't going to celebrate Eid. if you aren't christian or catholic okay it's not, not my birthday why I, it's not Christmas. my birthday it's your birthday why am i celebrating it? that's cultural oh. not in ingrained in religion that's completely different but, but i'm just saying the idea like it's your brother's wedding it's not my brother's wedding but i'm still coming you know, but it's respecting but that's and not celebrating. With no, no, no. When celebrate. you go to something to celebrate, you're celebrating that purpose. So you're celebrating your brother's. Exactly. You're celebrating your brother's wedding. I'm you're celebrating yours, like your birthday. I'm celebrating Christmas by going to a Christmas party. You're celebrating your brother's wedding by going you to the wedding. Me. You know, I'm you made the argument. Me from the <laughs> Stick perspective as a guest. I'm yeah. saying it's your brother's wedding or it's your birthday. Yeah, I'm still going to that function. To what? To respect, uh, to respect it? No. no. To celebrate but it. But to celebrate okay, but it. But like <laughs> it's not a religious celebration, like what you're doing by your presence. That's not the religious part, though. It's just... You're going out of respect as well a lot of cases. Too. I'm just saying it's weird to invite other people who aren't in that religion to a religious celebration. It's not. I disagree. I disagree completely. Well, is it weird to invite a Christian to a mosque? Agree. Is it weird to invite a Christian to a mosque? Is it weird to invite a Jew to a mosque? No, it's not. If they invited me to their church, I wouldn't consider that rude. That's different. That's like an interfaith dialogue. I'm not saying or just come pick. celebrate. The argument is that if it's if they do not participate or if they do not believe 100% in I'm that thing, I'm, it's not for no, them. And I'm I being disagree. specific to holiday parties, to celebrating a holiday. I'm being extremely specific with that not inviting people to understand your religion not inviting people to like at a celebration of a party you're not sitting there explaining your religious beliefs or <laughs> no. showing them about religious practice <laughs> no it's not it's not for the intention of trying to have an interfaith dialogue exactly it's so. for the intention of 
being with each other during their holiday. Yeah, it just seems that we all have different opinions and may look at things differently. Yeah, I don't know why Muslims always feel like we have to overcompensate. Putting up the Christmas tree at home, like, that's going so f- above and beyond, I feel like. Like, sometimes we yeah. just try too hard I to be a part. I think it back to, like, your point, though, where, you know, raising kids in a society where it's not majority Muslim, like, th- it comes with that difficulty. And so, like, sometimes people don't know, genuinely don't know what to do. And they, you know, they feel for their kids, like, being left out and stuff. So, I th- it goes back to that, essentially. I think a situation I'm always confused over is if they give you a gift for their holiday, do you give them a gift back for their <laughs> holiday or do you wait till your holiday to give them a gift? That's always confusing. <laughs> I mean, some people just do it like on Eid, I'll give you something and on Christmas they give us something. And like, it's not necessarily like a gift. It'll be like a tray of cookies or something. You know, like it's well, not something... Well, that's a gift. You, Anything can be considered I know, a gift. but I'm saying it's not the type of thing where you're expecting something in return. Yeah. I mean, going back to your comment on overcompensating, I feel like it's natural human tendency to want to belong and be like the people around you i think it's weird when people that are muslim have a a christmas party for other muslims (laughs) i think that's weird i think that's so unnecessary but instead of the christmas tree they have their tree (laughs) no no they just literally have a christmas tree and they exchange presents are they but not with the intention of like it being christmas are they inviting non-muslims or no no it's just muslims having a Christmas party for Muslims. Without the Period. intention of it being <laughs> Christmas? Yeah. This doesn't make so they sense. use Christmas as like a theme for the party. Mm. That's a Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, that is legit a Christmas party. It just, I guess it's confusing on why Muslims wanted to do it. I feel like people are just taking it on as a cultural thing. But I can see that argument when, like for example, Thanksgiving or your birthday. Like we can make those arguments that it's cultural because it's not specifically rooted in religion. It's rooted in you, the nation is holiday or Labor Day. I don't know. But Hanukkah and Christmas and Easter, like those are religious holidays celebrated for a purpose of religion. So you can't really make the excuse to take it on culturally because so, it's not cultural. And you could have a party or a get together during the season without it having to be Christmas related. Like you can, everybody's off. You can still get together and enjoy the break and stuff like that. And you don't have to exchange mm-hmm. gifts or put up a tree. Like it's perfectly normal to do that. So is it the fact that it's Muslim, like it's an entire Muslim party that, that it's weird? Or it, let's say it was a mix, Muslims and non-Muslims that are doing it. I don't think I a think Muslim has to be thrown yeah, in. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if uh, it's a Muslim who's hosting, that that's the problem. So then what extent do you guys think Muslims should go to celebrating holiday parties? Like, what are your takes on work holiday parties? Should Muslims be attending? I mean, of course, this is our own opinion. So, but just personally, with my experience, being in a mix, like, there's a good amount of Muslims, but there's also majority not Muslims and people that celebrate Christmas. So it's just like if they're having a holiday party, depending on the situation. So, like... The the ICU will have a holiday party. Oh, the intensive care unit will have a holiday party always at the end at the end of the year. But it's they'll like rent out a place. They bring a DJ. It's dancing and drinking. Like that's what it's known for. So I won't put myself in that situation. But if it's something where it's like a smaller, maybe at someone's house or like just eating out or at work or something like that, then I don't think that's a big deal. So for you, Hoyle, it just depends on what they are doing at the holiday party exactly if it's just like talking eating whatever hanging out i don't think that's a big deal so i would go to it yeah and i think it's it's good to like you know show that you're uh respecting other people's religions you know we might not be celebrating so you don't think that attending the holiday parties would be considered you celebrating the holiday no not at all i don't think going to a holiday party for work would be considered celebrating i think it's more of like respecting and embracing the faiths around you i think everything goes back to intention at the end of the day but if you don't have to go then why go like, you can hang out with people every other day of the year for every other different purpose. That's just my but you would opinion on it. it like I wouldn't consider it celebrating. Obviously, that's why I said it goes back to your intention. Like, if you just want to go to be respectful, although I don't think you not going is being disrespectful in any way. I don't think anyone would view it as you being disrespectful if you don't show up to a Christmas party. But People think, like... Even not shaking your hand, though, for Muslims is kind of looked at as could be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, imagine not going to a holiday party. No. Which I think they, you, should, they should be mindful and they you. should respect it. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, and they should respect the fact that you don't celebrate that. So if you don't want to go because it makes you uncomfortable, 
then they should respect mm-hmm. that. And I it, agree. But, and majority of the people usually understand and respect that too. Like if you say, hey, I'm going to excuse myself because I don't celebrate, you know, Christmas. I think for the most part, people will respect that and are okay with it. But I don't think not, I don't think attending the Christmas party is like you claiming Christianity or you celebrating. It's kind of just being there to be part, like be festive, be like, you know, interact with your coworkers. And like what I said, if there's nothing really, if none of the activities or anything are really questionable, then it's kind of just a get together. So a lot of the parties though, depending on where you're going, especially like if it's at a work related party, they will have like alcohol involved Mm -hmm. or they'll, I mean, they'll be mixing and mingling. So I guess it depends on what people are comfortable with, but that will be usually involved with these quote unquote parties or. Okay. But here's my take on it. Oh, go ahead. I think it's also important to know, like, depending on some people's roles in their organization or their workplace. Yeah. Because some people can't just simply not show up. Yeah. So, it's like, supposed to feel like the head or yeah. manager position. Yeah. Right. So, like, I know I could personally get away from not attending a holiday mm-hmm. party, but I know some of my coworkers who have higher positions yeah. really can't get away with it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think we also ke- need to keep that in mind. Yeah. But again, you know, if it's something like totally un Islamic or you could not attend i personally would try not to attend um but i think I do. Any, everybody could get away with it if they really want to is it socially hard to no, but there's some people yes. who are like the lead and they're like not yeah. attending it's like they need to come and talk to their, their own employees and stuff like that or their superiors maybe it's they're very rare that they see them so this is that time of year where everyone gets together that just you reminds know, like, me of this one time just there was this guy who was like the cfo of a company and he's like i don't drink i don't really like it but if i go to a party and i don't drink they all look at me weird so i'm getting myself used to drinking alcohol so that when i go there i can do it but like that just makes it see like it's socially awkward for him not to drink and it would be socially awkward for us to to go but if you don't like there's no negative correlation so you think it could potentially it. lead you down that path like if you don't go it's not like you're not going to be fired or you are not going no, to that's true. ruin your whole work life balance now because you didn't go to this party that's 100 percent true i i think if people whatever you believe in if you strongly believe in it and tell people that they will respect it 100 percent i just don't think i just don't understand why people would be against going i guess that's my point of view but if Here's another thing. If you're the type of individual that feels like you're doing this just to like interact and just maybe for you, this is like, hey, it could be a form of da'wah or interfaith or whatever. Like I'm a Muslim. We can coexist, like whatever, whatever. Then you should also be the type of person that when your holiday comes around, you should make a big deal about it also. Like why yeah, don't you plan sure. an office aid party or something? You know, just so just like we give ourselves the opportunity to be part of their festivities and their holidays, I think we should allow them the opportunity also to take part. Yeah, I don't know why we don't do that. And I feel I like think it's no, but it varies. Like sometimes you're the only Muslim in a workplace, so it's like you should still have a party, or you should still bring really? like gaik or something. Like you yeah, should just do oh, something yeah. where you're reinforcing your own faith also. It is intimidating a little bit because you always feel like I'm the minority here, so you don't really want to talk about what you believe in and what you celebrate. But I think that's something that we need to overcome Mm -hmm. no that's and i feel like more often times than not that's something within ourselves like we're always so quick to assume like this is how people are going to react this is what people think this is whatever and that always keeps us from actually doing things when when you do it everybody's so much more open to it or so much more like enjoyable or want to take part okay so i know when we were discussing talking about this topic we were trying to do some like research you know trying to get some facts going and stuff and we listened to yes he has a video on youtube i believe it's a like a two minute snippet, right, of mm-hmm. him answering questions. And he had actually said, and you know, we know Yasir Qadi is a scholar, and still, Allahu Alam, there can be a lot of different views and opinions on this, but he was even saying that it's okay to take part. A holiday party? In like, no. A generic it, office party. Exactly, a generic office party. But even in like the holiday spirit in general, he was saying, like, you know, like the Christmas sales or seeing the parades downtown. Like, what I found interesting about his specific answer was that not only did he say you could take part in generic you know office parties and he was saying you know a lot of different faiths go it's not just Mm -hmm. like just christians go or anything like that but he was also saying that it can also be generic but there can be decorations there and there could be like different things there he was just saying your intention is just to go and enjoy the company and you're not actually doing anything christian Mm -hmm. I mean, it was only a two-minute snippet, so mm-hmm. it wasn't, like, covered in depth. So there's other things that some people may be like, well, you know, he didn't address the alcohol there. Mm-hmm. He didn't address there might be music there. So, like, generic is very broad term as to, like, what that means. He did say, like, oh, like, you know, certain holiday decorations may be fine, but it wasn't specific. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't think we should just yeah, yeah, go off that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, be like, oh, this two-minute well, snippet summarizes everything. 
Like, I don't think we should even put labels. Also, people are very extreme and not wanting to attend. I think we should respect people and what they want to believe and follow. If they think that this is an environment Islamic they shouldn't be a part of, I respect those people. Yeah. And those people who want to attend, I I also respect them because I'm pretty sure they also have their reasons. So we yeah. shouldn't be like, oh, these people are yeah, yeah. these people are the... There's no right or wrong. Right. So I think just do your research. Ask your local imams as to like, what is the halal way? And with... Because I think everybody has a different role also in their organization. So for some people, maybe easy to avoid. Some people might have to... Whatever their case may be. So again, ask your local imams and see what the right way to go about doing a holiday party or being involved in a holiday party so again let's not throw labels on people okay like, yeah this you're right people. i didn't mean the label. no i just i yeah. also no, think no, ag- I, in agreement I, with what you're saying inara and i also think there's a lot of things that we automatically assume that we're not allowed to do that you may also be allowed to do we're so for me personally i didn't before I heard that video or even lectures in general, there's a lot of things in my mind that once I think about it, I automatically assume this is haram. Like we shouldn't even be thinking about it. We should veer so far away from it. When in reality, when you take it into context, so everything is really relative also. I mean, with this topic and a lot of other issues, I find that a lot of Muslims just sweep it under the rug with the, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And we are saying that about so many things lately. And it's starting to become like a big deal because you're losing aspects of yourself in order to conform to like society or the majority of what society is doing. Just with a lot of things, a lot of our responses is it's not a big deal until it does become a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I think the scary thing about that is we if we keep saying things are not a big deal before you know it, you lose your self. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you constantly keep pushing the line and it's Mm -hmm. like, then you just eventually, hopefully not, but like, you know what I mean? Like, who are you now and what are you following? Yeah, and I think it just slowly, and this is exactly what Shaitan did to like Adam and Eve. You know, it's not like right away he told them eat from the tree and they ate it. It was like slow progression to get them to take from the tree. So this is exactly, not to say this is every thing, Mm -hmm. but like this is a tactic of Shaitan where we think, oh, it's not a big deal. And then we're slowly, our following things that are not really islamic or that are gray and then we think it's okay but it's getting us off the path we also have to protect us i mean i i agree i think we need to have some sort of like self-reflection and have like these boundaries like okay i will not do this but when it comes to certain things i also think we overthink it like if we say happy holidays or if we do this like does that mean i'm celebrating it where it's like, no, you're not celebrating it. I think that's healthy to have these questions. I think for me, it shows that you care and you want to do the right thing. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Go back and have that self-reflection where it's like, okay, this is okay. This is where I draw the line. This is where I like don't cross this. Like, But you should also me, make sure that those boundaries are in line with your yeah, Islamic beliefs and stuff. That's true. But like, I think like going back to the whole holiday party thing, like I don't think that is... I guess that's a personal thing. For me, that wouldn't be crossing the line. But me bringing a tree home is crossing the line. Yeah, or like... Like, I've had that self-reflection where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I am still aware that I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah. I do not celebrate Christmas. Uh, and so I'm not going to do things within my personal self. But when it comes to having co-workers or... Bu- co- what's it called enjoying my time with friends like i will go to their party or this or that or like enjoy yeah that them. could say like like you were going back to so say like, when there's I the holiday party with alcohol and mm-hmm. dancing and stuff you said this was i wouldn't too much. yeah that's yeah, like yeah where i put some sort of border so it's like i have that self-reflection where like okay maybe i will say like oh that's not a big deal like that would be my argument with that but it's like there's certain things where it's like okay i've had it like i'm not going to do this and I guess everyone has, like, their own, like, I guess, line where they draw, like, okay, they might be, like, oh, I'll bring the tree home. Like, that's not a big deal. But then if I do mm-hmm. this, so, like, everyone has, like, their own restrictions. And I guess it just depends on what you're okay with. But but then if it goes back to the person, then what goes, they're okay with, yeah, then it's, like... Wh- or then maybe one year they weren't okay with the party, but then they're going to be with okay the party. And then the next mm-hmm. year they're okay with bringing the tree home. And the next year they're okay with doing this. Exactly. So, well, like, that's it, why it's it also important to small. ask. Like, you should ask what's okay and what's not. Because even if, like we're saying, I may think that something is okay, it doesn't mean that it's Islamically appropriate. And there are yeah. some things that we're okay with, like that we may be okay with with ourselves that... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't be okay with, you know? So there are certain things that you should ask. Like, you should know, okay, is it haram to say Merry Christmas? If it is, then I'll just say Happy Holiday. Just for an example, I don't really know if it's haram or halal or I don't know the exact ruling on it, but if it is, we should know that it is. You know, if going to holiday parties, regardless of if they have alcohol or not, is haram, then no, we should avoid it. But we're just saying in our own experiences, when we don't know these things, you should be able to kind of figure it out. Like, you should be able to be smart enough to maneuver around what's okay and what's not okay. I think majority of us, we have a sort of, like, sense of what's right and wrong. And we could 
judge based off of that so it's not to say like we are totally like clueless so like we do have a so, no, some but sort that of like, sense, good judgment that sense you can become desensitized very easily so that's true. yeah you're uncomfortable at first and then it just keeps happening and you're like okay well it's yeah. not bad and then you just get normal like it's normal now and then you move on <laughs> to the next yeah, that's true and then it becomes head on happens. real quick so yeah, that's true. Which is, like, I guess what we've been saying. Do some, you know, self-reflection. Ask your local imams. And I mean, honestly, sometimes you can even ask the people around you. Like, what are your thoughts about this? See what other people are saying also. You know, if you don't have maybe direct contact to a message or something like that, you can always just kind of also see what people around you are thinking or how they're feeling or something mm-hmm. like that. And kind of go based off that. It's also important to note that self-reflecting and realizing you did something wrong doesn't mean you're a horrible person or mm-hmm. that... Like, you're never going to be forgiven from God. It just means, like, correct your path. Like, don't think that just because you strayed or something that you can't go back. You can always fix yourself and Allah is the most forgiving and the most merciful. Mm-hmm. No, and our our the opinions that we have or the opinions that we provide aren't necessarily the best opinions or the things you should be or shouldn't be doing. But it's just kind of like when we're put in these predicaments, this is how we react to them and... You know, we just hope that people can draw from our experiences as kind of, you know, share with us your experiences. We're more than happy to also hear your opinions and how you may deal with these controversies or everyday situations. And on that note, thank you so much to everyone for tuning in and listening to this week's episode of To Whom It May Concern. Please subscribe, like, and follow us on social media. We appreciate all the support we've been receiving so far. If you don't already follow us, you're doing something wrong. But you could find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Modern Skeps. And please continue to tune in every week on Tuesday mornings. If you have any ideas you'd like to share, like we say every week, please feel free to email us at modernskeptics at gmail.com. Sincerely, The Modern Skeptics. P.S. Regardless of what you believe, always be respectful of others. Uh